and welcome to the 2019 FIA Certified Gran Turismo Championships. It's the top 16 superstars. It's the Nations Cup and it's the EMEA region, or the European region to you and me. And we've got a race coming up for you that is going to be absolutely tantalising. My name is Tom Brooks. Alongside me, Chaz Draycott to guide you through this race here today. And Chaz, we're it's set for this one to be pretty exciting for these drivers, aren't we? Yeah, of course. We've got uh, Group 2 machinery, as it's known in Gran Turismo. And we've seen a couple of region races already, and they have been absolutely launching these cars at the circuit, which is the very famous Mount Panorama at Bathurst. Here are the standings as they stand then after 29 rounds, Tom. Yep, TRL Lightning leading the way to uh, 24,119 points he has at the top of the timing order, but he's not too far ahead of the man in second place, Williams Favaros there, so keep an eye out for him. And actually the gap is very, very close from uh, the point leader of TRL Lightning all the way down pretty much to RC Mura. Any one of these drivers could potentially do something a bit spectacular and bump themselves up the order here. Yeah, of course, and you can see the two drivers there, including RC Mura, tied for seventh place on 23,255 points. So that shows even after 29 rounds just how close this series is. I mean, for them to have that many points and still end up with the same, it's pretty special, to be honest. And uh, hopefully the racing on track will reflect that all the same. Well, let's take a closer look at the circuit that these drivers are going to be competing on then. It is, of course, the very, very famous Mount Panorama Motor Racing Circuit, otherwise known as Bathurst, located in southeastern Australia. It is six and a half kilometres or 6.2 kilometres of absolute motorsport perfection. Lots of tight and twisty turns, lots of fast and flowing ones there as well. You can see the tight and twisty ones in particular being Skyline, the Dipper, all the way down towards the Forest Elbow before things open up for that Conrod straight. And look at the elevation here, Chaz, as well. It is absolutely astounding, 174 metres. Yeah, only, uh, only slightly elevated circuit. <laughs> it's unbelievable. When you go up the mountain and back down, it's incredible, no matter what sim and what car you're in. It's always good fun to drive on. We'll have just another quick look at the circuit. Just see how <laughs> there's so many corners in that, uh, in that section as you come back down the mountain, all compressed into one very, very tight and twisty area of the circuit. Yeah, from turns 11 down to 19, as you say, very tight, very much one at a time through there. Uh, but on towards that Comrod straight from turns 19 up to the chase of turn 20. That is where we're probably going to see the most overtaking uh, opportunities take place. There's a penalty line just going on to that Comrod straight. And there's also a penalty line out of hell corner of turn number one as well. So any drivers that are given penalties uh, in this race, that is where they will serve them in one form or another. So keep an eye out for that because it could be very detrimental to their race. Let's Speaking of the race, let's take a closer look at the race details then, shall we? As uh, Chaz said earlier on, Group 2 machinery at this Mount Panorama circuit, racing medium and soft tyres available for these drivers. We've had the qualifying session already, a 10 minute duration it was, the grid is already decided and we'll guide you through that in a few moments time, but nine laps of this track here with two times fuel consumption, seven times tyre wear, strategy. That is the crucial thing. It's going to be interesting. Drivers are probably going to start on the racing soft tyres here, but it's it seems unlikely they're going to be able to go all the way to the end of the race on those tyres because it's only a five-lap sort of uh, duration they're going to be able to get out of that tyre. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, as you can see there, if you're on the mediums for the whole thing, you would be losing almost a second a lap. And obviously, in a circuit where track position is very, very key, that might make or break a lot of guys' races. You can see at the bottom of well, as well, of course, that you will lose around sort of 15 seconds in the pits. So you've got to weigh up the options, really, of whether it is worth pitting for that or not, or whether you can make the soft tyres last until the end. Um, it would be quite a wise thing to see how far you can get them, but at the same time, you don't want to risk losing too much of a lap time or too much of your pace, at least, towards the end of the race where it's more important. Yeah, exactly. You could start the racing medium tyres and go all the way th to the end, but you can see a, a 0.9 of a second difference per lap. Uh, would that negate the fact of a pit stop of 13 seconds, 15 seconds in total with that tyre change there as well? It's interesting to see what the drivers are going to be able to do. Anyway, with that said then, let's head over to the grid. The drivers lined up on the grid. A rolling start is the Frenchman TRL Susu who starts on pole position. Alongside him is TRL teammate of TRL Lightning. Then it's Parasa in third. HRG, the Dutch driver, RK in fourth place. Williams Geo, TRL Manu Rodri, uh, Keith 25, TG Tenka and Williams Adam as well inside the top nine. Over the line they come though to start the race. Down towards Hell Corner for the first time of asking. No moves being made at the moment, but you can see uh, HRG, RK 23. That's Rick Kevelham getting very, very late on the brakes at the first corner. And he is already signaling his intentions to try and close up onto the back of 
Jake Peralta there in third position. Yeah, he's really pushing it through Hell Corner, trying to get every little advantage he can as soon as possible. Doesn't quite get it done. They ran a bit deep. Speaking of TRL Tusi, a little bit wide there in the Team Redline car. He's really got TRL Light and his teammate right behind him now. And as they go into the cutting, it's going to be interesting to see what he can do as they go over the top of the mountain then. Still climbing up this way through the right-hander. This is a very, very difficult corner here, though. He took it through to the right, and you want to just straighten the car up as best you can. But that left-hander just creeps up on you as you go over the crest. The grip disappears from you, and through McPhillamy Park they go. The downforce really at work here. Now watch these cars through here. Absolutely brilliant stuff, isn't it? As you say, they're the two TRL teammates very quick out of the blocks. Uh, there is Williams Geo in fifth position as well. Very distinctive Williams S livery on his car from the eSports project that they have running and uh, easy to spot him out on track there in fifth position. Just behind him is TRL Manny Rodri, who's made some good ground actually from his starting position. He's up into sixth place is the Spaniard as he just clips the wall on the outside there uh, through the forest elbow going on towards this Conrod straight for the first time of asking Manny Rodri not able to close up on the back of Williams Geo as we ride on board with the Italian as things stand over the brow of the hill and in towards the chase for the first time of asking but uh, second place potentially coming under a bit of pressure now as well as uh, Tiro Lightning has got a mirror full of Pirata 666 going through that chicane and in towards Murray's for the first time. Pirata is going to be like a piranha at this point in the race, <laughs> it's going to be all over him while the field is still bunched up after only one lap it's the time to get the moves done and get on with the job looks like Lightning's got a good run out of the final corner there. They go down towards Hell Corner and at the start of lap two. This is what Susu wants though because he'll want them to start battling behind him so he can try and make a run away with it with the lead as they come onto this second lap. A little bit wide out of the first corner there for TRL Lightning. Does that allow Parata to close up? I'm sure it will do but I don't think he's going to be able to find his way past as they uh, ascend up the Mount Panorama circuit here. That 174 metre elevation change really does uh, show quite a lot as we ride on board with the Italian. He's all over the back of TRL Lightning at the moment and of course TRL Susu meanwhile just increases his advantage. Eight tenths of a second it sits at uh, the start of lap number two. Here is HRG RK23. Williams Geo very close behind there as well. All of these guys keeping it pretty sensible as things stand. But look at Parasa there as well. He is seriously closing up onto the back of TRL Lightning. Is Mikizal in second place going to be able to defend? Going through one at a time as they come down uh, the dipper and in towards the forest elbow. You would imagine he won't be trying any moves there. But if he can get a good run, Parasa out of that left hander of the forest elbow, surely that straight is where he's going to be thinking about those moves. Oh, yeah, it's definitely going to be one of the safest overtaking opportunities here as well. I mean, seen people before try and go down the inside into somewhere like Skyline or try and go too wide through the dipper even. It's just crazy what some of these guys will do for a place. But look at the amount of slipstream they're going to get down here as well. You can see Lightning dip into the right there to try and break that slipstream. Maybe also defending his teammate a little bit so the two of them don't naturally sort of hook onto the back of him and, you know, carry the pace forward. But he's not really got much option. He has to line it up for the chase into this very important braking area then. Gets it turned into the left, tries to carry the momentum through the right. Car gets a bit of a wiggle on though. Doesn't quite carry the momentum he needs though. And he can't hook onto the back of TRL Lightning yet into the final corner for the second time. And we cross the line now onto the third lap of this race then. It's the two TRL cars still leading the way, Tom. Very impressive stuff indeed at the start of lap three then. You can see Parata, meanwhile in third position, the first non-TRL uh, team driver you can see there uh, he is still trying to pile that pressure onto TRL Lightning just in front of him then uh, Rick Cavalham in fourth place our HRG RK23 doing a really good job as things stand there in fourth place everything relatively stagnant here so far but will we see strategy coming into play here do we think any drivers are going to opt to pit are they going to opt to have fresher rubber at the end of the race or will they try and go the whole distance potentially on these racing soft tyres I think now will be the good time for them to start weighing up the options based on how the race is playing out. They may only be on their third lap of the race so far, but it's just about thinking how much time will I lose, how much time can I gain, and you know, it's it's a whole sort of uh, mixed bag of short-term gain, long-term loss, or vice versa. So they really, really have to make their minds up, and of course to be able to do it in such a, like a short, um, a short length race is, is one of the sort of key parts of being a racing driver. I mean, you, you have to be able to make these quick snap decisions and see whether it'll pay off for them. So I think it may work for someone like Parata right now because he's, he's not really making any ground on them. But then you've got to think, if he gets fresh tyres and comes back out after, will he make ground anyway? Yeah, exactly that. Well, let's see what will happen. We're riding on board here with Williams Geo, the uh, Italian, as he's right behind Rick Cavalham here. In the slipstream he is, but not quite able to make anything uh, of a serious lunge. He's closing up those that go through the chase. He's going to think about something into the following chicane. Well, 
RK23, they're going a little bit defensive, holding his line, but still no way through there for him as things stand at the moment. Now ready to start the fourth lap here at Mount Panorama. And everybody keeping their nose relatively clean, but Williams Geo getting very close behind the Dutchman as things stand at the moment. This is a nice bit of driving here from Williams Geo. He's just keeping that pressure at a constant on the Dutchman uh, currently and not allowing him any sort of rest by any breathing space, any kind of mistake, and he'll be nipping straight through to take advantage. He's just going to be very careful chasing him up the mountain, though, because, of course, if he makes a mistake up here, it's very single file, so he could easily just go into the back of him or, you know, that may help out um, HRG in front of him but you've just got to make sure that you've got the space to go for a move if the, re the opportunity comes about. So it'll be interesting to see how they approach it, but um, I think you've just got to keep a level head in this lap then as they go around there up towards the mountain again. Still two TRL cars leading the way then here is, uh, that's TG Tenka in eighth place at the moment with Williams Adam 41 just behind and Key 25 just in front. He's in the, uh, a British driver's sandwich. <laughs> yeah, certainly is. The finished meet in the British sandwich. As you say, they're Key 25 just in front of him, and then it's Williams Adam at 41 at the tail end of that. And, uh, well, that, of course, uh, is Adam Sosuilo, driver who we're very familiar with seeing in the World Tour events, of course, and be interesting to see whether he's able to do anything. We know how quick Williams Adam can be on his day, but so far this year we haven't really seen the true potential of the young Briton. Let's see whether he can try and show some of that potential here this afternoon at Mount Panorama for round 30 of the Nations Cup for the EMEA region. Now look at Williams Geo meanwhile, crossing back to the other Williams driver. He's still all over the back of Rick and he's trying to find his way past. He pulls towards the inside here, RK23 doesn't go defensive. William goes towards the uh, inside as Geo side by side they come down into that chicane and a brilliant bit of driving there up the inside. He had trap position, he was able to make that move stick. Yeah, that was beautiful stuff, nicely done on the brakes, very committed. And it was quite a clean move as well. A little tiny bit of contact has went through, but that is to be expected. These guys are all feisty racers. Here is your second place driver then, TRL Susu at the moment has lost the race lead to TRL Lightning in that number one machine then. And it looks like he's got a really good exit out of there. So he's running away with it at the moment. Pirata now only six tenths of a second back. So quite an even spread between these top three. It'll be interesting to see how this pans out over the next few laps. I'm wondering what's happened to Williams Favaros here, because he's down in 13th position as well. And let's not forget, if you look at the uh, point standings before the start of this one, he is doing very well indeed. And this is not the race that the Hungarian driver needs. There he is. You can see him just behind PL1 Jim Bree at the moment, or JM Bree at the moment, uh, going through that right hander. All of these three guys running pretty much nose to tail with ROH Benito very close in the uh, forefront of your shot there. Coming up through the ascension of the circuit, we go, and you can see just how much more speed they've quite clearly got over Benito at the moment, but just no room to be able to use it as things stand. This is so much one a time through here, but this is where they have more pace. Yeah, definitely. It's um, it's a bit of a waiting game almost for them through here as they go through McPhillamy Park again. You've just got to make sure you're really judging the speed of the car in front. If they are slowing down, that you don't sort of compromise your own momentum too much. And of course, that you don't make contact. I mean, we, we like a bit of close racing, a bit of door banging in motorsport, but too much contact and obviously pitchforks and, uh, and torches start coming out. So <laughs> we don't want too much of that. On board with Susu then, down the Conrad straight as they go over the crest, completely flat now, nearing 180 miles an hour as they go down to the chase. Here's Williams Geo under pressure again from HRG RK23. Bit of deja vu here. Is he going to get it done on the brakes? He's not. He brakes early, plays it safe. He's going to just be doing a bit of the mind games here, don't you think? Yeah, you think you're absolutely right there, uh, Chaz, as well. And of course, pit window is now open, but crucially, no drivers going into the pit lane. This is where we thought, uh, based on the strategy at the start of this race, is where the tyres would start going off their useful time. And oh, a bit of a slip and a slide, a bit wide there for RK23. That's going to allow TOL Menu Rodri to slide alongside and get himself up into fifth position. Down towards that first corner we go. The Spaniard is already ahead. Bit of bumping as well from RK23, he's getting himself all out of shape here and that's going to allow Key 23 and also TG Tanker to close up onto the back of him now as well. So RK23 with a couple of corners to forget there and that is really putting him under pressure but he immediately tries to fight back against CRL Manu Rodri. Manu Rodri, the Spaniard, goes for the inside line. He runs it a little bit wide though through the right-hander. Will RK23 have anything to answer? Will he send a lunge up the inside into the left-hander? Sensibly, I think he's going to think better of it but you can see how close he is. They run nose to tail it's going to be so much one a time through here that he's not going to have any speed to be able to use it or any uh, room rather I should say to be able to use that speed however all the while they're squabbling it's allowing Key 23 TG Tanker to close up on the back of them 
Yeah, definitely. And they're all scraping the wall through there as well. They're not given an inch at this point in the race. They're really going for it. They know just how much they want to get the gaps closed and progress through the field as they go down through Skyline, through the right-hander, into the dipper. You can see them just controlling the cars on the brakes, trying to stop them getting out of shape. They're all just clipping the walls here, and there the sparks all around the circuit. It looks fantastic. Through the forest elbow once again, onto the power, and down the straight. Now you can see the speed in the bottom right of your screen just absolutely flying. Now look at the acceleration of these cars, and especially in the slipstream as well. It's immense to watch. It really is good to see. Here is Key 25, driver who is held in very uh, high esteem in sim racing circles. And you can see him attacking the Dutchman here. He pulls alongside him, going into the chase. Side by side they come. Ford track position, down in towards the left-hander. He's got the outside line. He's got no room to use it as RK23 parks it on the apex there. Exactly what he needed to do, but is he going to have a lunge towards the inside? No, he's not, because RK23 defends that position once again. Here comes TG Tenka and also Williams Adam into the fight as well. And surely now these drivers that have come to start the sixth lap are, sh are going to be thinking about just going the whole race distance before pitting. Yeah, it's too close for them all now to start pitting because they'll just completely take them out of the scrap if they do so. It's probably not worth it now at this point in the race in terms of how much time he'd lose in the pit lane for how much he'd gain back on track. And these three in the lead as well, they'll be thinking the same. Susu second place at the moment. He's only got half a second back to Pirata though. And Lightning is running away with it at the moment as we go back to this battle then. HRG RK23 with Key 25, TG Tenker and Williams Adam. Great scrap between these four as they go into the cutting. Look at the pace they're carrying into there. I wouldn't dare do that if it was me on this sim. I'll tell you what, it's a good thing it's them boys doing it and uh, not me. But the, the, the overall pace of a lap round here as well is absolutely incredible when you see how thin the track is. It's yeah, awesome. It's mega, isn't it? 1 minute 50.867 is uh, the fastest lap from your race leader of TRL Lightning and indeed the fastest lap overall in this race. In fact, no, the fastest lap overall is a sub-150, a 149.779 uh, for TRL Lightning. So he was clearly pushing on very early on. Here is Williams Geo getting out of shape, as does the man in front of him of Parata. And Williams Geo has closed that gap down, and Parata has got a penalty here as well for clipping the barrier. That is a disaster for the Italian and his compatriot. It's going to be finding his way past before too long as well. Through the penalty zone we go. The car's going to go, and Williams Geo goes straight past there as well, up onto the rostrum. Such an aggressive penalty as well, isn't it? It's so, so heartbreaking when you're going down a straight as important as that. Look at the time that he's lost from it. But that's what you get, I suppose. And it, overall, it's probably a good thing, really, that the system does that. It calculates what you may have oh, gained. Parata's oh, is wide as well, and that allows Manu Rodri to come through. Brilliant bit of opportunist driving there from Manu Rodri. And another mistake from Parata sees him lose two positions in the space of a few corners. And look at this, as TG Tenka is battling with Williams Adam as well for seventh place. Adam oh. a little bit wide out of the final turn there. He kicks up a bit of dust. He gets all out of shape, and that allows Garke 23, who's dropped back massively, to come back through. And a penalty there for TG Tenka. He's to serve that onto this straight here. That is a disaster for the finish driver and another penalty for Key 25 as well. So this is getting very frantic indeed. Those two drivers serve their penalties and the rest of the field come trailing on through. RK23, Williams, Adam taking advantage. The two Hungarians of Benito and Faros also sliding on through and then to add insult to injury, they drop down to 11th and 12th position outside of the top 10. A simple mistake, absolutely crucial to how their race has played out. Yeah, it really was. I think there was a bit of sort of collateral contact between the three of them as well. I think uh, Adam ended up in the wall, saw some sparks flying, just as we saw then as well. Pirata now, of course, he's dropped down to fifth place. He'll be absolutely gutted with that, not to be on the podium anymore. He's going to be chasing down Manny Rodri, but it doesn't look like he's catching up with him, really, to be honest. Looks like Manny Rodri's running away with it as they go down Skyline, onto the brakes, into the dipper. You can see the car leaves the ground, nearly clips the wall on the right, just gets a bit out of shape, manages to save it. Amazing commitment from these guys down here as they go into Forest Elbow. Here is the battle again then between Williams, Adam 41 and HRG RK23. It's a really eventful race so far, hasn't he, the, uh, the Dutch driver? Yeah, there's no two ways about that. He got a very poor exit on the Forest Elbow, and that's going to allow Williams Adam to surely close up on the slipstream. RK23, I don't think he's going to defend that position too much because he knows the closing speed of Adam is going to be very good indeed. He pulls alongside the Dutch, but at the moment does Williams Adam. He's down the inside of the chase. He's into sixth position as well. Nicely done, 187 miles an hour through there, side by side. Great to see the respect from these guys to race so closely together, and he gets the move done. Up into sixth place he goes. Here is your second place driver then, TRL Susu with Williams Geo. He's really closed in on him now as well. What a great drive he's having. A bit under the radar at certain points, it's uh, probably safe to say, but he's onto the podium now with one lap to go and only seven tenths of a second 
three quarters of a second pretty much. I've got to think you could have a go. Yeah, absolutely right. Well, 6.2 kilometres here left at the Belt Panorama circuit here. A serial menu Rodri has also benefited massively from the penalties of other drivers. And you can see Ferrata there in the background. He'll be ruining what might could have been, uh, might have been for him because he was in third position, if you don't forget, earlier on in this race. And he's dropped down now to the fringes of the top five. And look at Ferrata, though. He is trying to fight back against the Spaniard. He's trying to find his way past. He's going to be a bit, a bit of a pitch to try and do so before the end of this race as the battle still reigns on for sixth position as well between uh, Williams Adam and then this man here of R uh, RK23. A little bit of a dust kick up there for Williams as well. That's not going to help his drive down in towards uh, this uh, dipper section and in towards the forest elbow. He needs to get a great exit out of here to try and use the advantage of the slipstream to its full potential and get himself alongside him before they get into that chase corner. It looked like he was a little bit sideways into Skyline as well. Oh, Susu lights up the rears on the exit. That may compromise his run, but they seem pretty even down there at the moment. Let's keep our eye on the gap on the timing tower on the left-hand side. Five tenths of a second you've got. It's going to come under that now. Look it's not going to be close enough, I don't think. I think the slipstream yeah. is just not going to be too uh, as effective as he wants it to be in towards that right hand. Here we go. No such dramas, though, for the man leading the race. He took it over. We didn't see it on screen at the time, but TRL Lightning getting ready to come in towards the final turn. Williams Geo is going to try and have a think about a move, but he's going to be too far away. He flashes the lights to try and distract the Frenchman, but through the final turn we go, and TRL Lightning takes victory in the EMEA region. Over the line he comes. The German is on top here at Mount Panorama. Susu finishes in second, and Williams Geo finishes in third. Oh. A big spin there at the final corner, was it not, for Manu Rodri? A little bit of a slip and a slide there. Pirata in fifth position. Williams Adam comes home the line down the order as well in uh, sixth place. Uh, RK23 in seventh. Williams Favaros in eighth. RH Benito in ninth. And then uh, JM Bree in tenth position, rounding out that top ten. Turismo Shumi, we hardly mentioned him all race. He finishes in 13th position. Oh, and Tyrell Org with a spin out of the final corner allows Nassini 95, the Austrian, to take advantage and finish ahead of him on the road at the chequered flag. Well, what a frantic race that was. Great scrapping all the way through by these guys. Very deserving race winner there, TRL Lightning. Once he got the position from his teammate, he just drove away. And, of course, nearly getting three TRL drivers on the podium. That would have been amazing, but just not quite getting it done. Brilliant stuff there. Great drive from TRL Lightning. We saw how much pace he had in the early stages of that one. He used it to his full potential. As you can see there, 149.779, the fastest lap overall in this race. As we said, just on the fringes of the top 10, Benito and JM Bree. TG Tanker there with a weekend to forget, as did uh, Key 25. Both of those drivers suffering penalties in the latter stages of the race. Turismo Shumi at uh, DNA's D91, and then Nassini finishing in 15th place. Tyrell Org with that spin out of the final turn demotes him down into 16th and last position here in the Nations Cup for the EMEA region. So, the point standings after 30 rounds of the series, then you can see TRL Lightning is still on top, but the man who's made gains is Susu. He has managed to demote Williams, Koke and Parata down into fifth position as well. Yeah, it's important for Parata that as well, because you've got to think what could have been if he would have got that podium that he was on for, so that just shows you how quickly these things can change. But like say, 30 rounds and it's still that close. That's awesome to see. So hopefully when the, uh, the next event comes up for them, they can uh, get as frantic as that again, because that was amazing to watch. Absolutely right. Well, speaking of the next event then, the next Gran Turismo World Tour event takes place on the 24th and 25th of August in New York. We've got action from the Nations Cup and the Manufacturer Series as well. Be sure to tune in, because it's going to be an absolute cracker.